Okay. Do you have a helper? Yeah. She's telling me that she'll ride, but she needs mommy to hold her. Oh, yeah. Mommy, yeah, she's a good seatbelt system. Mommy, why is she crazy? <laughs> She'll hold you. <laughs> All right, I'll hop you in. You can sit in the middle, okay? In the middle, right there. Hey, you ready? What do you think, yeah, Evers? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all, these are our friends, the Sippies. This is Jenna and Wyatt. And they are here today at her house because Jeremiah came across something. Y'all hear bear hollering. He's like, why am I not with you? <laughs> um, that we came across something in our shed and Jeremiah called Wyatt and said, hey, I have something I think you might be interested in. I'll tell you why in a second. All right. So down on kind of the corner of our property, we have these two old barns and I don't make a lot of video down here. Um, our neighbors have dogs and stuff. It's often loud. But when we got here, there was some old stuff in some of these barns. And we already cleared a lot of it out. But Maya came across these boxes of some old records and stuff that he thought, you know, I don't want to just toss these. These might be worth something. We don't really have time to do anything with it. This is why you have to get your hands dirty. Though. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Can't There's, write our name in the dust. We don't even know. I mean, I don't know what's in there. Yeah, other than... Could, could be something. Be, it could be something. Be a record worth a million dollars. That's true. You gotta have an eye for it. All right. Look at this. This is cool. RCA. And I don't know nothing about records either, so I'm not yeah, sure. Those on the I, edge look a little rough, but like some of them, I think are probably in pretty this good is shape. This kind of cool. Like Atlantic Group. Who's behind the door? Zebra. So yeah, I mean they're definitely old. Do you, where did these come from? They we don't know. The Oh, they were here. Oh, yeah, they, they, wow. They just came with the barn. And that when Jeremiah was cleaning out, there's a bunch of trash. But he saw those and he's like, you know, you never know. There might be something of value in yeah, there. Because like, usually when you want to see records in the thrift stores, it's like the bigger ones. These are yeah. like little. Yeah. So Wyatt is a reseller. And he has a YouTube channel called Rewilded Reselling. And we met him when we moved here through our church. So I wanted to introduce them to you guys. Because one of the, the questions I get most frequently on my channel is how do you pay for this? And obviously having a YouTube channel, being able to write books and make content, sell our merchandise and all that stuff has really paved a way for us to be able to really homestead full time together at home as a family. And I realize that not everybody is going to have that opportunity. But there are ways that you can create business and make money working from home and reselling is one of those ways. And so I thought this is a really cool example of a family that has kind of gone off the mainstream path to do something different in order to be able to stay home and provide for their family. What do you think, Wyatt? You think there's anything in there there's of value? Some, yes. We looked up the Rick James one. Rick James one. Oh, nice. Check that out. Just the artwork alone is just amazing. But no, there was sold comps on it. Like they were kind of all over the place, but I was seeing like, you know, five bucks plus shipping all the way up to like 17 bucks plus nice. shipping. Nice. And so, if you've got even a handful well, like in there that are in here. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, if, if a lot of them even went for like a few bucks. I mean, here's like a Warner's Brothers. Yeah. So, yes, there's definitely going to be money in here. This is That's cool. cool. Very cool. Hey, look. What's your egg? Show Evers, you got, you, got, oh, you got a magnet? You got some eggs. Did you know I drew that? Yeah. <gasps> I did. You knew that? Wow, you're so smart. <laughs> what is that? Eggs. It is eggs. That's right. Eggs right there. Ride. You gonna ride? Yep. 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 Yeah. I love rides. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's getting puppy. You want to see Gabriel? Yeah. Y'all, Maya's little swing setup is so nice. He put he put three out because the little kids would come out here. Nobody wanted to get in the hammock until somebody got into the hammock, and then everybody wanted to get in the hammock. So he put three out here, and they do. We'll look out here, and they'll all three just be laid in hammocks, and it is so nice. You get the view of the trees, the sound of the farm, and it's definitely nice. Oh, Jeremiah, he is smitten with little ones. She told him to walk to the top of the pile, so he walked to the top of the pile. He's following all the instructions. He walked, that's right, see the rocks. I see. Why don't you climb to the top? Can you do it? No. 
Abby. That's it. And then she just stops. <laughs> climb. Here go. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> So Wyatt told me that he had something for me that he came across in his thrifting adventures because he spends a lot of time in thrift stores and different things like that, obviously, looking for things to resell. Oh, nice. That was like a reveal there. <laughs> the thing comes up and it's just sitting Listen, this is, this is no joke here. This, okay? <laughs> For my size, I would have been tempted. Is, that is perfect. This is vintage. One of my things is vintage stuff. So this is, anytime you want to look to see if it's vintage, you know, you just look at the tag. And if it says, like this one says made in USA. It's made in USA. It's probably from like the 90s. Yeah. But, so that's really cool about it. That is so awesome. And I was, Jess said in one of her videos like a couple weeks ago that she likes to get some of her stuff from eBay. Yeah. And I was like, I'm right here. <laughs> and then the next day, I found this. That I was is like, so this my like style, I love it. <laughs> now, it won't be useful today because it's, it's like pretty warm. 80 degrees. But when it does get cold, I think it'll be great. It's like, you know, lined, it's just a snap yeah. close. So, Thank Jess, you. <laughs> To you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, that was really sweet. It was sweet to get to share our friends with you, send them with something that we had no use for, and receive this really cool gift in return. Also, guys, we are like far enough removed from having little bitties, like Benjamin being our baby, he's turning seven here in a few months. It's been a while since we've had a baby, and we are ruined. Like, so Noah and Maddie announced to us a couple weeks ago that they are having their first baby. And I'm just gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna be... Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Belligerent, even. All right, guys, it's evening now. Um, after our friends left this morning, I had some things to work on, so I turned the camera off. But now, I figured I would turn it back on because I'm in my kitchen and I am going to start the process of making lunch for tomorrow for about 30 people, I think, including children. We're having our first, it's kind of a butchering class, I guess you could say. We have this hundred, uh, we have a hundred meat birds that we've raised over the last couple months. Um, our friend Wes and us, we decided to go in together and raise a batch of meat birds together. And he brooded them and then we brought them out here and we've been rotating them on the pasture here at our farm. And we have a lot of people here locally that are really interested in learning how to raise their own meat and so we kind of just opened it up to them because we were going to be butchering and to show them how now we have hopes in the future especially once we have more of our farm built kind of more facilities here um we have hopes of like doing this regularly and doing workshops and we've kind of talked about the potential where people could you know like buy in and come and help butcher and take home um, a certain number of birds and stuff like that so that's all down the, the road but this is really exciting for me because when you have a big picture of what you want to do kind of those first attempts at it even though you know it's not fully how you've envisioned it but kind of those first expressions of it are always really exciting and one of the things that I really want to do when we do class type stuff is I want to have good meals that are largely farm raised. Now it's a little bit hard for me right now because my farm's not producing a whole lot, but I really started thinking about it and I decided on what I'm going to do for this, this workshop. All right, so I'm pulling out this big roaster oven. This is like a 24 quart roaster oven. And if you don't have one of these, you might not have reason for it, but I'm telling you what, this is one of my most used kitchen tools. I've had multiple roaster ovens over the years. So when I was a young woman, a teenager in high school, I lived with my dad. I would uh, break the rules and I was actually a pretty rule following kid, but I got in my head in retrospect this wasn't super safe, but um, I got in my head that I wanted to feed the homeless people. And we lived near this, we lived near the capital of Arkansas, near Little Rock. I grew up right in a, you know, a suburban community outside the capital. And Arkansas is not a really big place. Little Rock's not a massive city compared to like actual massive cities, but it was the big city that I grew up near. 
And as a 16 year old, whenever I was just starting to drive, um, my dad found out that I was actually taking money and going and buying things like cans of tuna with pullback tops and like all of these different things. And I was taking like bags of food and I was giving them to people underneath bridges in the city. And um, he didn't punish me for breaking the rules. He told me I couldn't do that anymore, that that was unsafe. But he bought one of these big old roaster ovens and went to like Sam's Club and got these big cases of these styrofoam cups. And what we would do on the weekends is we would make this big pot of soup and we would pour it in these cups and tape a spoon to the side and he would go with me and we would go and hand these out. This is a, obviously a really sweet memory and something that we used to do together. And so this was like, as I grew into adulthood, it was always like you gotta have a roaster oven and, and my mom had given me one. And, and I remember like as my family was growing, my mom was like, you really need one of these. And the only time I really used it was at Thanksgiving for a long time, but then we started growing our own food and we started having things where we really needed a lot of food. And you can make a lot of food in one of these. You can roast a turkey, you can actually put like a pan down in it and roast in it like an oven. And in our mobile home, this this is not a large oven. Um, like even like some big pans don't fit in there. And when I first started cooking, I was like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? And I actually snagged two of these at Thanksgiving uh, just at a store. They set them out at Thanksgiving because obviously people buy them to do turkeys and hams and stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, I should get a roaster oven. And when I was sitting here thinking, how am I gonna feed 30 people this weekend? I remembered those massive vats of soup we used to make. And I thought, oh yeah, soup, chicken soup would be, um, would be a nice meal on a cool winter day, December day, uh, to feed everybody. So that's what I'm gonna do in here. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit how, this is gonna be a two day process, but I can go ahead and tell you guys about it now. So I've thawed out four chickens. These are chickens that we raised. And since I don't have a lot of stuff really growing here on the farm, I did buy the vegetables that are gonna go into this. So I figured we would use our chicken and then at least it is in the vein of what I'm trying to do, which is serve food at our workshops that came from the farm. These came from our farm in Arkansas, but it's the same. And I'm gonna rinse this out, unwrap these chickens and get them in here to roast. So I like to use roaster ovens to make broth because this pan that sits in the oven, um, you can, I mean, it's just, it's a pan. And so I like to put, if I'm gonna do beef broth, taking all the bones and just putting them in this pan and you can roast them there in the roaster oven and then pour the water over them and then simmer them in the same pan, which makes for a much obviously neater process. You get any of that flavor of sticking to the pan, the bits that are sticking to the pan. And what I actually like to do for broth is make a lot at once and then can it. And I'll can quarts, which I can then put into soup or whatever it is that I'm making. But I'll also can pints, and even sometimes I'll just can one cup jars for sipping. Like if anybody gets a little cruddy having good bone broth on hand that you can just uh, open up a cup and sip on it is really nice. Four chickens packed into this roaster oven. If your goal is roasted chicken, probably not the best way to do it. Um, you know, it's, it's when you put that much meat in close quarters to cook it, it steams a little bit instead of crisping. And so you don't necessarily get the crispiest skin. And also you might have some uneven cooking to have these whole chickens so packed in. You see, this is not, not ideal for roasting chicken. But roasting chicken is not really my goal here. When you make broth of any sort, if you roast your meat or bones first, uh, it just makes your flavor deeper. And my goal here is not necessarily to get this chicken fully cooked. So I'm gonna turn this on to like 350 or so. 
All right, awkward voiceover moment here because I lost an important clip. Before starting the roasting, you have to put all the seasoning on. So I put a lot of salt and pepper and some paprika on these birds. Now, I will put vegetables in the broth, but not until after it's simmered overnight because I don't want those to turn the broth bitter. And in an hour, I'm going to take a few pitchers of water and cover all this chicken with water. And then I'll probably cook it at that point about like 20 more minutes or so. Just to make sure that if there were any pockets that weren't like heating evenly, that those go ahead and the meat does get cooked. And the thing is, is I'm going to put all that meat back in and cook it longer later. So I'm not really worried about, I, I'm, I would be more concerned about overcooking it at this point than undercooking it. But at that point, I'll take the chickens out. I will shred all of the meat off the bones, get all the meat off and put the bones back in. And I'm going to, I'll put more water in and I'll let that simmer in this roaster oven overnight. And that way it's making more of like a bone broth. Now, when I'm Making bone broth, and that's my goal. I'm not usually using whole chickens, I'm using carcasses that I have saved. A lot of times, like if I'm cooking whole chickens or anything like that, I'll save the carcasses after we eat like roasted chickens. And then once we have a handful, I'll put them in here, cover them with water, and usually uh, simmer those for uh, sometimes upwards of like 36 hours. I'm serving this for lunch tomorrow, it's evening now. So it's not gonna simmer that long, but it'll still be a nice, rich broth. And I'll have that chicken saved in the fridge and I'll be able to saute onions, carrots, celery, um, some herbs. I'll probably put a lot of herbs in this. Namely, um, sage, parsley. Um, I like thyme. Thyme is probably one of my go-to herbs whenever I'm cooking something like this. Oregano is really good. And I will, will put a lot of herbs in this with the, those aromatics, a lot of garlic, and then uh, let it all simmer down and I'll probably put rice in it will be my go-to because I just always have a lot of rice on hand and I can put you know a few cups of rice in this big pot and this is gonna be three gallons of soup and so that'll feed everybody tomorrow I did start um, I just got some sourdough starter out of my fridge. My sourdough has been rocking and rolling and already you can kind of see, I got a lot of bubbles. I just fed this. Um, and so it by, by tonight, by the time that I go to bed, which is probably gonna be about five hours from now, um, this will have doubled. And I will go ahead and mix up some batches of dough tonight to bulk ferment overnight. And I can start baking those like mid morning. I'll form the loaves in the morning and let them rise a little bit more. It'll be a little bit of a faster sourdough. So tomorrow by lunchtime, I will have three gallons of soup done. It'll be pretty hands off. And I'll have a handful of loaves of sourdough bread to be able to feed all these people. So I shared my friend's rewilded reselling uh, earlier on in this video. And I'm gonna go ahead, since we're talking about cooking, uh, bulk cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and share another YouTube channel with you guys that I have been watching a lot lately and getting really inspired by. I actually caught one of her premieres yesterday and was chatting with her, um, Becky from Acre Homestead. And she does a lot of really cool, um, just videos about cooking and food prep and, and growing food and all that stuff. And I found her because YouTube just suggested a video where she was making all these freezer meals. Well, in my mind, I have given up on doing a ton of like freezer prep cooking because it's all crock pot meals has been my experience. So much of that is crock pot meals or it calls for a lot of like, you know, packaged and processed ingredients, convenience ingredients. And to me, when I'm used to cooking from scratch, my family is used to eating food that's cooked from scratch. Um, whenever I make these like kind of convenience meals, nobody really eats them that well. You know, like it's not something anybody's super excited about. And I cook for my family because it's a joy. So I want them to be excited about the stuff that I'm cooking. But she does all these freezer meals and she packages them in these glass like Pyrex containers and wraps them up and freezes the whole container where you can thaw it and put it in the oven, no crock pot. And um, I've been watching these videos like crazy and just being so inspired and excited. So I printed off a bunch of her recipes um, the other day, yesterday. And I am preparing to do like a big 
day like her. Now she's awesome at making the videos while she does it. I don't know that I'm there yet. I'm gonna, oh, there's one sneaky Ben. Um, I'm gonna try to like get through like a major overhaul cooking day. And I don't know if I have the capacity to film it while doing so many things. I am intensely impressed by her ability to do that. But I wanted to share that with you guys because, um, you know, talking about making like big bulk things of food like this, like I, now I'm thinking, you know, you could make a whole big bulk batch of soup like this and freeze you know containers of this and thaw them and put them on the stove and have dinner ready and i really want to gear more into doing that where i'm spending like a couple of days a month really cooking throughout the day to simplify dinner times because i mean we all get in a rut and i've really gotten in a rut about food since moving because i don't have like the steady influx of food for my farm to keep me inspired and uh her channel has really inspired me and i really needed that so check her out acre homestead i will link both of the youtube channels i've talked about in this video down below and also i don't have like a link or a place for something like this roaster oven if you're wanting to look for something like that but that's what it's called if you want to look for something it's called a roaster oven and unfortunately this is one of those things that people will buy and then like you know a lot of times you'll go on amazon and things will be like crazy marked up I paid like $45 each for these and that was like a Thanksgiving special. If they're over $100, that's not a good deal. Um, they should not be over $100. $40 to $70, I would say, is probably pretty average for one of the bigger ones. And you might be able to find ones that are like, oh, this is not a super known brand. And, and some of the brand ones might cost more than that. But just so you know, I don't want you going and looking for something that you heard me mention and thinking that $150 is a good deal. That's, that's marked up too much. Well, a lot of talking for me, and now I'm going to stop that. Benjamin, why don't you come say bye to everybody with me? Can I show you? Can I show you reading? Hey, what are you reading? Boxcar Children. Boxcar Children, nice. Well, I want this to get flat. Oh, is that sticker on the back bothering you? Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, Benjamin does not want to stop reading his book to sign off, so I will sign off on behalf of both of us. Thank you for hanging out with us today. We bless you. Until next time.